This is an unusual and interesting story which came about in summer 2009 when we were filming the CES Classic Marathon in Slovenia. And it's all very strange. Here we are in the middle of the beautiful countryside and we've come across something very interesting. The sign here for Zelina Veer. Now, if I remember correctly, Zelina Veer is where the legendary Rally Mulvania used to start. Now, I never actually believed the stories about Rally Mulvania, never believed that it existed, but if this sign is to be believed, maybe we can find out more about it. Soon after, at a nearby time control, while we were trying one of their local specialities, hot chocolate spiced with garlic brandy, and it seemed that we already had a breakthrough. I think we've had a stroke of luck already. Martin Clark, competitor himself, Clark of the course of many events, says that he knows something about the rally. What, what do you know about it? Well, for some time I didn't think it actually existed, but then I was speaking to my father, and he recorded that he did the event in the 1930s, and he doesn't remember much about it, other than that it was started by King Zog of Albania. He was the official starter of this event. And it was a sensational event, using all the mountain goat tracks and sheep tracks and everything. Amazing event. So I think it did, does actually exist. And is it true that the entry fee that, that I heard was like, it was either what, 100 or whatever the, 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 the currency was, 100 things, or a goat or something? Yeah, well, you could pay with goats or sheep. And uh, if you paid with four goats, um, you got a free wife. Maybe we were closer to the home of Rally Mulvania than we thought because just down the road from the time control was another legendary Mulvanian speciality dish. Pigs roasted in spit. That's not the same as spit roasted pigs, of course. These really are roasted in spit. How was that then? <sighs> oh, it was like the rally Moldavia. <laughs> Mulvania. Oh, well, I remember it well. <laughs> what was the strangest experience you ever had on the Rally Mulvania? Uh, the strangest experience, I'd say, was one year when uh, our car wasn't ready and yeah. myself and another... Uh, Put up when you're ready, Joe. That's okay, well-known Irish competitor. Yeah. Um, hired two cars from Hertz. All right. And uh, my one packed up about... Uh, after the first day, we got a puncture and yeah. then we went looking for the spare wheel and discovered we didn't have one. Mm. And... Uh, so we got, uh, eventually I had to keep going on the, on the front puncture. Yeah. Eventually the car rolled, so I, um, uh, the brake caliper came off, clamped the brake caliper with the vice grips yeah. and kept going. Well. And uh, Frank incidentally, to get going, uh, he needed a helmet in his class, yeah. so he stopped a local uh, motorbike guy yeah. and bought his helmet off him. <laughs> and we acquired the fire extinguishers from the hotel. Excellent. See you well, later. See? Sounds like you think that contraption is for in the bank, Mayor. Um, well, we're using the Mulvanian timing system here, and it runs off a, it's a, it's a strange voltage in Mulvanian, it runs off 37 volts, so we have to have extra power from this little water wheel we've got in the, vault, uh, in the bank there to power up the, the watches for the end of this test. Beatty, some people have told me there were some very strange formats that the organisers used to set on this event. Can you tell me oh, yeah, what strange was, thing um, happened to you? They had really fantastic stages, but there was this one really special stage that I'll always remember. Um, it was on a railway line. And that presented a very special, you know, we had to really do something very special because we had to check for the schedule of the trains, of course, and we had the special tyres. What sort of tyres did you use? Well, we had to have these concave tyres. Who made those for you? Well, we, we were contracted, you know, we were in a Mini Cooper and yeah. I was with Adrian Boyd, and we were contracted with uh, Dunlop, and I don't know whether you remember or not, Jeremy Ferguson mm. was the competition manager. We send the metallics, of course, there are no faxes or anything in those internet. Send the metallics, and he sent back a telex. He said, You guys have been drinking too much Slivovitz. And we said, No, we need concave tires. Because all the other works teams are these special concave tires. But they didn't arrive in time, so we just slipped and slided, slid all over the, the tracks. You know, it was, it was awful. Now, behind me is the start of the world famous Grobming hill climb. Now I've been told, but nobody will admit it on camera, that they used to use this on Rally Mulvania. They'd use it in the normal way uphill, and then they'd do it in reverse. That's not come downhill, but go up it backwards. Some people are telling us that Rally Mulvania, they used to change it, the format all the time. Uh, can you remember any particular one? Uh, yes, it was uh, one day and four nights. What, non-stop? 
non-stop. How do we do that then? You work it out. Now I'm with Arf on a Marcel Kurtz and Marcel apparently did Rally Mulvania in the early days uh, and he's going to tell us a little bit about it so but it's he only speaks Dutch so um, I believe that the rally had some very strange formats he changed its format from year to year if that's the case can you ask your father what was the strangest one that he ever did? Yeah the rally the Frankrijk was the format every year what is the strangest that that's that's ever made in the rally? The most strange was the first leg in the winter and the second leg that came out, that was in the summer. Yeah, what he said was the, the strangest he ever had was that the first leg was in winter time and the second leg was in summer time. Really? So after the first leg they had to put the car in the uh, park for me. Yeah. And six months later when the sun was shining the second leg was driven and they had to start uh, had to start again. You were involved with Rally Mulvania over quite a few years, but there was some oh, yeah. strange happenings. What, 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 what specific you can remember? Well, there's one occasion, one driver, he was a, a local man, uh, and he was a bit of a joker. And uh, on that particular rally, he'd, he'd, he'd done it several years. And it, there was a roundabout just out of town that was covered in rhododendron bushes. But there was a footpath through the middle of the roundabout. And if he'd got a new co-driver with him, his, his trick was to go up to the roundabout, lean across the co-driver and say, oh, straight on at the roundabout and drive into the bushes along the footpath and out the other side. And he hadn't done it for a couple of years or so. And he, he came to the same point, he got a new co-driver, the roundabout trick. So off he goes, ah, straight on at the roundabout, into the bushes and hit the substation they built six months earlier. So, um, you're a rally historian. What do you know about Rally Mulvania? Well, as I understand it, the event first started back in the early 1950s, actually as a sort of promotional uh, vehicle, if you like, for the Mulvania motor industry, which was still very fledgling then. They were building a car called the Scumpter, which, whilst a very strange vehicle, was ideally suited for Mulvanian roads. It had one headlight, you didn't need much more in Mulvania than that, only three cylinders and a stylish plywood interior. It was lit by candlelight, in actual fact. And they really wanted to promote this car to the rest of the communist bloc countries. So they invented this rally, uh, Rally Mulvania, and limited it to cars of up to 1,000 cc. The Scumpter, in actual fact, was only produced in three forms. There was the basic 258 cc version, the 300 cc RS, and the 400 cc turbo. Uh, that used to blow up quite a lot, actually. Um, anyway, this event ran quite successfully, never quite, made a, it never quite made it into the European Championship. And in 1963, as an effort to get into the European Championship, the Mulvanian Automobile Club invited Paddy Hopkirk over to compete on the event in an 850 Mini um, with a local co-driver. Unfortunately, what they didn't tell him was that the, they had to also carry two security guards in the back of the Mini, which did give it rather a handicap, four up in the Mini for the event, and also uh, aided in the, in the car's demise when, on a very steep downhill descent on gravel, um, the sheer weight of the car, four up, made them slide off the road and crash into the river, dribble, and end their rally. We couldn't find any pictures of the Scumpter but we believe that it was a cross between the Peel 50 and the Peel Trident, but apparently not have been seen for years. Um, no, they are a very rare car. I believe one does survive in a museum somewhere, but it, nobody's yet actually ever tracked it down. Mm. As I said earlier, it is a three-cylinder, single headlight, like the early Citroen 2 CV in actual fact. Um, plywood interior, very tasteful plywood interior, lit by candlelight. But amazingly enough, although this is a very basic and simple car, it did actually survive the European crash testing. Um, when they drove four leading European models into a wall at 60 miles an hour to see what the effect would be, and the Scumpter actually survived unscathed because it broke down on the run-up. And what Keith didn't mention there was that the Scumpter's chassis is made from Mulvanian cedar and that's because it's so much like metal uh, that it's the only wood that rusts. And as you saw from that stream there, and if you look alongside here, you can actually see where the rain has come down into the forest. It's hit the uh, Mulvanian seed, it made it rust, and then the water's carried on down. As you can see here from this tiny little puddle, uh, it's rusty coloured water. Mulvanian cedar, the only wood that rusts. And here we've got a prime example of Mulvanian cedar being used properly 
It's been made into this fantastic sculpture. It was only put up a week ago and it's rained for most of the week and already it's rusted. And the incredible thing is, it even sounds like metal now. <laughs>